Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about a room within a room. It's a common term, it's a common phrase that people use all the time, but it's really a term that's kind of regulated towards noise transmission. Noise transmission, noise is vibrational acoustics, so we have to manage the vibration from source to receiver. We build a barrier. Well, in order to do that, separating the structures so they don't touch each other, room within a room, is a good start, okay? So really, we're talking about room within a room, we're talking about isolation. So we have to be a little bit careful here about our terms, because people mix these things up all the time. It's funny, you know, I, I spend 15 minutes on a phone call uh, to get on problems and solutions uh, for your rooms with our electronic calendar and our room form system. And I probably spend 50% of that time dealing with misunderstanding and miss. It's amazing to me that there's so much of that out there, but there is, so we have to work through it. Well, we know when we're dealing with isolation that every barrier material we use is frequency and amplitude dependent. If you have noise problems that are below 125 hertz, it's a lot different in structure, your barrier that you build for noise that's above 125 hertz. A common example of that is that double wall glue stuff that people use all the time. It doesn't work for low frequencies. So if your noise is above 125 cycles and you don't mind giving up 10 inches of space, which is to me ridiculous, then that's probably a viable method to use. So we have three of room walls that we have to be careful with. We have a BTU, a barrier, and a treatment wall. BTU, hot and cold. Keep your room warm or cold. Those, those are regulated by city and government codes. So much R value, so much this, so much that, okay? The barrier is noise. How much, what frequency, and what amplitude of noise do we have to stop? We have to measure. Then the inside of the room is the treatment, the absorption and diffusion. That's what we have to deal with. So three walls, hot and cold, noise, absorption and diffusion. Sometimes we can combine the noise and the treatment. Reduce the amount of space requirements. Sometimes we can't. Just depends on the noise transmission issue. If we measure the noise and it's below 125 cycles, we're going to need a separate structure if we're going to do it right. A lot of people out there don't do it right. Well, we're all about doing it right. People say, well, you just don't compromise. And I'm not going to compromise because the internet and all of that garbage that's out there is one big compromise. And if that's what you want, have at it. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in 100% fixed and 100% right solutions that we guarantee. Find another company on the internet that's going to guarantee noise transmission. You won't. And the reason you won't is because they don't know what they're doing. They can't figure out how to stop noise. So there's no way, if they can't figure out how to stop it, they're going to guarantee it with their wallet. All right? We have to look at the frequency and the amplitude of the noise. Let's just use a, a, a noise situation that's below 125 and above 125. The barrier for noise below 125 can be twice as thick, can contain two to three times more materials because of the low frequency aspect, frequency and amplitude of the noise. So you have to measure, measure, measure. Measure three times, build once, okay? Measure during the time of the day when things are gonna be used. Low frequency noise is always a separate wall. I can't think in the back past 40 years where we've ever built a barrier where there's low frequency noise involved that we've combined it with the BTU wall. I can't think of one. It doesn't surprise me, my memory's not as good as it used to be, but I can't think of any out of hundreds that we've built, so probably it didn't happen, all right? 
we must measure the noise over seven days. People are always saying, well, why do we have to do it over seven days? So we get a complete picture of what's going on. Because some days may be louder than other days. And it's those loud days that'll destroy the results if we don't measure for the loudest day. We not only want to measure for the loudest day, but we want to design for the loudest day. That's critical too. We call them mins and maxes. Maximum pressure, minimum pressures. We design for the maximum pressure and then the minimum pressures are fall into place, right? All right, we must measure the room outside the noise. Outside the room, we must measure what's going on because the noise outside of our room, out here, okay, and the noise inside of our room here, that these walls are a ratio of this over that, okay? Or however you want to do it. You want to do it this way? Doesn't matter. It's a ratio. Whatever the noise level is here and whatever the noise level is here, this barrier that we build is a ratio of those two numbers. We've got a lot of noise coming out of the room into a quiet neighborhood. We've got a problem. What you were able to get away with during the day when ambient noise levels were high because of human activity, you're going to have the police at your door at 2 o'clock in the morning because noise levels fall 40% on the average in neighborhoods when human activity ceases. People are sleeping, okay? I guess in cases like this, if you don't have the money to build the proper structure, you should be sleeping also, <laughs> all right? So we must measure the noise outside of the room. We can simulate what's going on in the room. That's no problem. But I never know how noisy the neighborhood is. And I never know what times the peak frequency and amplitude of that noise is. So that's why we have to measure, measure, measure. Okay. We must measure during the usage hours. We must know when you're going to use the room so we can design for that usage. Okay in that hour and time frame. Let's say Tuesday morning, there's garbage trucks, there's this, there's that, whatever the noise level is outside, and you have a live room or a vocal room and you wanna do some recording. How are you gonna stop that 40 cycle energy from the garbage truck that sets off all the car alarms? At our studio, the drivers, and I've talked to them about this, but they like to have their fun too, I get it. They'll just go down the street, first gear, you know, maximum torque, maximum amplitude at 40 cycles. Every car alarm goes off. There'll be 10, 12 alarms going off at once at five o'clock in the morning. It's always fun. Thank God we all get up early. <laughs> it's crazy. So we must measure during usage hours, that's critical. We have a process. We send you some apps, download them on your phone, take the measurements per our instructions. We have really good videos. We've done over a thousand of these. I think 1300 was the number accounting sent me last uh, week. So we have a process that's very proven and tested. Okay. And it produces great results that we can guarantee. So you'll be safe using our process. You record the numbers using our apps with your phone, put the data on our online data sheet and you send it to us. And I compare it with all the noise data I have based on your usage, based on the noise numbers in the neighborhood and all the other variables that are involved. My database has over 300 rooms that have been measured for noise. Your room is in there, your situation is in there. So I have real world data, plus I have you know the other data that we crunch using formulas and numbers. So, room within a room is usually a term that we use for noise transmission. But as you can see here, a BTU wall and a treatment wall is also a room within a room. So nothing's easy in acoustics. Everything is a little bit difficult. But getting good sound quality in a room is about doing a lot of little things correctly, but more importantly, in the correct order. You can build the finest room in the world with the proper rates and levels of absorption, diffusion on the proper surfaces to match usage. You can do all your homework, do it all right. 
you have a noise issue, the room is ruined. So be very, very careful with noise. Room within a room. I really hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.